So what I was trying to say was um, we've talked about so far component form of vectors. And the component form of vectors we now know has an initial point at 0, 0, and then a terminal point, right? But what I wanted to do is quickly just kind of talk to you guys about um, going back to the unit circle. And there's something that was very, very special about when we looked at the unit circle. And one of the things that was special about the unit circle was the distance. And more particularly, the distance of our radius, or the length of our radius. Because we knew that the length of the radius was always 1, one right? And when the radius was always 1, that's what helped us be able to find the special right triangle for 45, 45, and 30, 60, 90, right? That's how we were able to find you know, those points on the unit circle for 30, 60, 45, and 90 degrees. So with vectors, if I have a magnitude of my vector v, let's say this is v, if the magnitude of v is equal to 1, right? So we learned how to find the magnitude, right? Magnitude of vector equals the square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared. If that is equal to 1, this is what we call a unit vector. OK? So if I just give you a vector and I say find the unit vector of that vector, how are we going to do that? Yeah. Well, we need to make sure that the magnitude is going to equal 1, right? So if I give you a vector, and let's say I give you the vector, let's make it nice and simple, v1, um, comma, v2. So if I give you a vector, v1, v2, right? Those are going to be your terminal points. And if I say find the unit vector, here's what you're going to want to do. So the unit vector, all it simply is going to be is that vector divided by the magnitude of v. Which vector? Yeah, which vector? One or two. So I could rewrite that as v1 comma v2 divided by the magnitude of v. But isn't it the same? It's the exact same thing. But you guys just asked me, is it v1 or v2? It's both of them. v1 and v2. V1 and V2 make up V, right? V is equal to V1, V2. So it's the vector V, or V1, V2, however you want to write it to make sense for yourself, divided by the magnitude. I'll go through an example. But what you're doing is you're dividing your magnitude into both of those vectors. Okay? And we'll go through an example to kind of look at it. What? This? Yeah. So when you divide, so it's an unit vector, then it's a unit vector. Yeah. Right. Here's how you find the unit vector. So what I'm saying is, so here's an example. If this, if the magnitude of this, oh, I'm sorry, good point. <laughs> unit vector, it'd be u. OK? If your magnitude of u, or u, is going to equal v over the absolute, or the magnitude of v. Right? So let me go and make a point here. So if my, so if, rather than using v, let's say this. If my unit vector, my unit vector is going to equal 1, then I have a unit vector. OK? So this, if the magnitude of this, the ma oh, I'm sorry, the magnitude of this is always going to equal 1, meaning this is the unit vector. So all I want you to do is if, guys, I give you a v, a vector v, and I say find the unit vector, that means find, when I can take the magnitude of it, it's going to equal 1. All you simply do is take the vector and divide it by its magnitude. When you take the vector and divide it by its magnitude, you now have created a unit vector. What is a unit vector? A unit vector is when you take the magnitude of it, it equals 1. Let's go through an example with real numbers. How does that sound? I think it'll make a little bit more sense. Because 